Hey guys, we're here with another Foundations video where we are going to talk about some musical techniques that you can use to pad on keys effectively during a worship set. We talked a lot about the reason for padding along with what padding should consist of in our Padding 101 video, so if you haven't watched that yet, be sure to check that out at some point. And in this video, which we will call Padding 102, We'll talk about some things to consider that, if applied, will make your padding more musically excellent. Fade-ins, transitions, pad filters, and piano tones. One of the most overlooked aspects of padding is how fast or slow it becomes audible in a mix, or the fade-in. This is going to greatly affect how padding makes a moment feel. We don't want our pads to just appear at their full volume all of a sudden, like this but we wanna fade them in, especially to start a set. And the sweet spot would be for people to not even notice the fade, but realize that at some point, pads were brought in and they didn't even notice it. Let me demonstrate this now. See, as I'm talking, I've been bringing the pad in and it's kind of just snuck in underneath my talking. And another really important thing to consider is the way you structure your chords for this fade in. First, we want this to be fairly similar and register to the first keys part that you'll be playing for the first song. And after finding where that is, start with a wide octave in the left hand, and then a lower fifth with a one, or a one with a higher fifth in the right hand. These perfect shapes provide a great starting point for the pad and provide focus for the song. And we can bring in some other intervals to add some feel and emotion on top. Depending on the song, I will typically add either a second and a major third or a major third and a fourth. Here's how these sound. Right now, I have just the octave in the left hand and then I have a one and a five in my right hand. So I'll start this fade over with a couple more intervals baked in. Here's a second and a major third. And notice how different this one sounds. Now let me go back and add a major third and a fourth. Here's how this would sound. The really perfect first and five intervals are great, but you could probably hear how adding those other intervals created a different feel. So think about how you form your chords when fading in the synth on your pads. Another thing to think about when you're padding is how your transitions between songs sound, particularly between songs that are in different keys. Hopefully the songs that you're leading are in keys that are related to each other, but it's not the end of the world if they aren't. In Padding 101, we talked about how piano is usually included with a synth for padding moments, and the first principle for transitioning well to a new song is to pull the piano out of your signal completely, leaving the synth to make the transition for you. We don't want to hear an isolated block chord on piano ring out during a count-in. That can be really distracting and make us lose some momentum in the transition. A simple way to make a transition to a new key is to let the last chord ring out, pull the piano out, begin padding in the new key while your sustain pedal is still engaged, and then release the sustain pedal to move on to the new key. Once you are in the new key, you can bring the piano back in and resume padding like normal. Let me show you a transition from the key of C to the key of G, and you can hear this principle in practice. So I have the pad in C ringing out. I'm gonna pull my piano out. I have the key of G. I'm gonna bring the piano back in. Adjusting the volume of your synth is integral to a proper pad fade-in, but another way to add variety and dynamics to your padding is using a filter on your synth patch. A low-pass filter or high cut will remove all of the audio above the frequency which you set your filter at, and you can use this to progressively add more energy to your padding without even touching the volume on the synth. 
Now, most keyboards will have filters with a slope of 24 dB per octave, which will give you a really warm pad sound without much of the high mids left over. But some will have a 12 dB per octave option as well, which will make the filtering much more subtle. Let me show you what padding would sound like with some periodic adjustments made to the synth with the 12 dB per octave slope. Go ahead and fade this in. And right now my pad filter is right about 250 hertz. Go ahead and increase it just a little bit. The last thing we want to talk about today is the kind of piano sounds that work well in padding moments. If we want our padding to be a backdrop for some kind of speaking moment or other element in a service, our pianos can't be so bright that they stand out too much, even if the next song calls for that sound. Dark, upright pianos and electric pianos are really great to use for padding moments. Let me show you how each of these sound compared to a brighter, grand piano sound. So I'm gonna fade my pad in and here's a little bit with a grand piano. Now here's the upright. tell that it's much darker and feels way more emotional and sits back in the background way more than that bright grand piano did. Now here's that electric piano. electric piano has a similar effect to that dark upright piano. We hope that this video has been helpful to you guys in providing some deeper musical techniques for you to use as you jump into padding in your worship sets. And if you have any questions about this content at all, please feel free to reach out to us at worship at grace-bible.org. And we'll see you next time.